Colossians, the second chapter, verse 13. If you have that, I want you to say amen. The Bible said in you, he's talking to you. And anytime he says in you, you know he's talking to you. <laughs> Being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Amen. Would you lift your hands and pray for us tonight? Oh, Father, we love you. We honor you and praise you, Holy Father, asking and praying Somebody say amen tonight. Amen. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell him, I'm going to help Brother Lamb preach tonight. All right, Brother Cannon. Now, you know what the Bible says about all lies. <laughs> I didn't trap you. I just asked you to tell your neighbor you're going to pray for me and help me tonight. Amen. I want revival, don't you? Amen. Uh, Pastor Smith called me up and said, Are you really wanting to come preach revival, Brother Lamb? And he just didn't know how bad I, I, I was wanting to hear. Probably wouldn't have anywhere else. Probably wouldn't have. So busy, got so many things going on. Been preaching more since I've been pastoring than I was when I was evangelizing. Preached seven times last week. Just at the home church. Preaching and teaching and just working for the Lord. Just so busy. But I felt like God would have us come this way. And I feel like God's going to help you tonight if you just let Him. Amen. Amen. Verse 15, the Apostle Paul said, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe or a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Well, in the book of Luke 18 and 27, the Word of God said, And He said, Jesus, the things which are impossible with men, are possible with God. The things that are impossible with men, they are possible with God. Now, I kind of laugh when I say this, but I am a chess player. I really am. I don't get to play very often, but I love to play. It's a game of war. It's a game of strategy. I've tried my best to teach Sister Lamb how to play but she won't sit down long enough for me to teach her. Amen. And I'm pretty sure that she knows that if I teach her how to play, she's going to have to play me all the time. <laughs> I never have really pushed her because I know if she learns how to play, she'll beat me. <laughs> so she won't learn how to play. Now, in 1 Corinthians 9 and 24, the Apostle Paul compares the spiritual life to a race. This is what he said. He says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? He says, So run that ye may obtain. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 26, he compares it to shadow boxing. He says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, as not as one that beateth the air, he says. In Ephesians 6 and 12, he compares it to a wrestling match. He says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So as Paul brought us analogy from racing, boxing, and wrestling, I want to bring an analogy tonight from the game of chess. And I'd like to preach to you on what it takes to win. On what it takes to win. You know, there is a way that you can win tonight. And you're not just going to stumble into a victory. You've got to know how to win. You've got to have the knowledge to win. You've got to have a know-how to win. You know, there's a lot of folks, they want to play around, they want to fight. And I can remember in high school, a lot of them jokers were going to fight. And they would wonder how somebody so little could whoop somebody so big. It was because they knew how to fight. And if you're going to take the enemy out, if you're going to be victorious in your battle with the enemy, you've got to have some knowledge tonight on how to do that. You've got to know how to win. I'm not even a good chess player, much less a great chess player. But I have played some great chess players. And I've heard the words of some great chess players. There's three elements that must be consumed in order to win and be successful at the game of chess. Three basic things that you must take from the enemy to win. These three things are time, space, and material. I was sharing this with Brother Cannon the other night. And I tell you, brother, it's been on my heart heavy today. The three things, time, space, and material. God is not in a chess match with the devil tonight. It's a funny thought to me when we talk about the, the Lord being in a, in a chess match with the enemy. That's not so because the Lord already knows what He's going to do before He does it. And not only that, he'd be cheating because God can make him do anything he wants him to do. I said, tonight God is not in a chess match with the enemy. The church, we are in a very, very real way. We are in a very, very real way. Our strategies are plotted. Our diversions are invented. And schemes are brought together to take your time, to take your space, and to take your material. And don't fool yourself tonight. Because the enemy is very good at what he does. He knows how to win. He knows how to take you out. And he's on his job tonight. Would you say amen tonight? Amen. In chess, you try to take the opponent's time. You try to make him run out of time because if he runs out of time, you force him to move hastily. Now, when he moves hastily, he makes mistakes. You take your opponent's space by forcing him to move around you. And he tries to figure out how to place his men on the board without being taken. And last, you've got to try to take the enemy's material. One piece at a time, you take them until you dwindle his pieces down to nothing. If you take his time, if you take his space, and you take his material, you will win. A good chess player can win if you take one of those elements from him. But a great chess player can win if you take two of those elements from him and you leave him one. So tonight, I'd like to tell you this. When all three elements are gone, you're going to be a loser. The possibility of winning is zero. But tonight I'm not going to waste my time on talking about good chess players. I want to bring some great chess players of the Bible into our focus tonight. I want to discuss a few about four great chess players tonight. I want to talk about Job for a moment. Let us consider that great man of God. The Bible teaches us that Job lost his material and Job lost his time to the enemy. When the enemy came against Job, he really put it on him hard. The Bible said first he took Job's material. The first wave of attacks took his, his camels. It took his sheep. It took his oxen. It took his house. And it took his children. His camels were his transportation. A Satan attacked his transportation. The oxen represented his tools of, the, of his trade.
grain, the plowing the fields. It represented his food and his sustenance from the garden. The sheep were his means of support. Shearing the sheep brought them their income. He was attacked in every aspect. He was attacked in every point. Then he lost his children. He took his home from him. The enemy did a real good job in taking all of Job's material. The enemy took Job's time. He was occupied in weeping and mourning. He was occupied in the ashes. Oh, he was occupied in weeping and brokenness. Then came his closest confidants. Then came his closest friends. Oh, they find them, his so-called buddies. They occupied his time by insulting him and accusing him. And they tried to tell Job that nothing like this could come on somebody that was really righteous and really holy. You have to be a sinner, Job. You've had to have sinned somewhere. So the enemy took his possessions and the enemy took his time, but the enemy made a mistake with Job. He left him his space. Job 23 and 8, Job said, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. He gave Job room enough to search for God. He gave Job room enough to go forward and to go backward. The writer said in Acts that they should seek the Lord. If happy, they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us he messed up when he gave Job room a search after God he messed up by giving Job space you see church there's going to be times the enemy is going to take your stuff there's going to be times the enemy is going to take your time from you. And you're going to be weeping and crying. You're going to be mourning while sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But if you'll refuse to give the enemy your space, you can still win the game when he locks your material up. And you ain't got no money. And the bills are high. And the finances are low. And he takes your material when he locks up your time with homeschool and work and all the menial tasks of life. Listen, if it gives you space enough, you need to soar into the heights and in the depths of God. If you got space, you can win tonight. Say amen out there. Oh, yes, the enemy took Job's stuff. The enemy took Job's time. But 42 chapters later, I don't know if he was wearing an Armani suit or not. But I will tell you this. Before he was the richest man of the East, when it was all said and done, he was twice the richest man of the East. So whatever he was wearing in the beginning, it just became twice as good because the enemy gave him space to seek God. Have you got any space tonight? Has the enemy left you some space to serve God? You say, I couldn't find him here, Brother Lamb. Keep on searching because if you feel long enough, you're going to find him. Amen. Well, let's talk about another great chess player of the King James Bible. I'd like to talk about John the Revelator. He got caught up in a nasty match with the old enemy, and the enemy took his material and took his space. You see, they came down to the church where John was preaching at, and they didn't ask him for permission, and they didn't give him a search warrant. They just broke down the back door of the house of God, and they stripped him out of his pulpit, and they took him away from his family, and they took him away from his home. They took everything that he had, and then they took him, and they threw him out on an isle, a little tiny island called Patmos. Oh, and left him there in exile, hoping that he would die. So they took his place, they took his material, and they took his space. But listen to me, church. When the enemy takes your material and he takes your space, be on the watch. Because if he doesn't take your time, you can still get him a spirit on the Lord's day. Hey, you may be locked up in a prison house. But give me a little time. I will search you. 
He could take his material from him. And he could take his space. But he couldn't take the revelator's time. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He had time to call out on God. He had time to cry out to the Master. And he ended up checkmating the enemy with nothing left but time. Hey, I may not have no money tonight. And you may not be in the Crystal Palace tonight. But one thing you've got, Covenant, you've got time. You've got time to search God. You've got time to fall on your knees. And if you get real spirit, even on the Isle of Patmos, you're liable to get a revelation from Almighty God. You said you're going to help me preach tonight. Oh, I want you to help me preach tonight. How I'd like to, why I'd like for you to see John's last move in the game of the, of the enemy there playing chess. He was coming off the Isle of Patmos, and the Word of God said it came up on a wicked, wicked man. Ended up he was a he was a leader over a band of robbers, and he came up the mug, old John the Revelator. But the Holy Ghost came on him, and he taught he started talking about Jesus. And before you know it, this cruel, wicked murderer fell down on his knees and said, Oh, tell me how I can be saved. And every one of them got saved in the greatest checkmate that ever came off the aisle in a Patmos. Amen. Checkmate. Amen. Here's two real good chess players. Hey, hey, man, you ain't told that story yet, have you? Hey, okay. I won't be able to tell it. I ain't never told that story. I'm going to tell this one right here, though. They took old Palm Silas. They were running a revival throughout the city. They're casting out devils, and they're healing the sick and the lame. The game was looking real grim for these two uh, men of God. Oh, hallelujah. It it was a tough game, and the enemy was sweating because Paul and Silas was casting out devils, and they were doing a work for God. Are you going to say amen tonight? Oh, but the enemy turned up the pressure, and he pulled out a few secret moves, and had Paul and Silas locked down in the jail, house. He took their space because they were bound hand and foot in chains and fetters. He took their time because they were locked down in a jail cell. And he was looking grim for these men of God. But the enemy made a mistake. He couldn't take their possessions. Oh yes, even their time and space was gone. They still had a song in the night. And they still had a prayer on their lips. They sung and they cried out to the Lord and God sent an earthquake. You heard me right tonight, church. The enemy may take your space and it may take your time. But if you still got a song on your lips tonight, you need to lift your voice and cry out to God. If you're here tonight and it feels like you're going down, the enemy can only take you out if you'll forfeit the game. Because if you'll try real hard, you're going to find an element in your life that you can capitalize on and come out victorious. We find Paul and Silas in this jail. They checkmated the enemy and took the jailer and his entire family right out from under his nose with nothing but material. Amen. Now I've told you tonight about four great chess players. Not just good, but great chess players. I've played some good chess players and I've played some great chess players. I've never played a chess master. You know, I heard a story one time about a man by the name of Bobby Fisher. It was really intriguing. Mr. Bobby Fisher was the greatest chess champion ever and nobody could hardly beat him at all and he whipped everybody there was a whip and he disappeared out of nowhere. They searched for Bobby Fisher, searched for Bobby Fisher and they thought maybe he was dead. 
there was a Russian chess master rose up on the scene and they said that this Russian chess master was greater than Bobby Fisher was. Everybody they thought Bobby Fisher was dead. They hadn't seen him for years and years and years. But out of thin air, Bobby Fisher came back on the scene and he started promoting the greatest chess match ever. And Bobby Fisher beat that Russian about six games in a row and vanished just like he came on the scene. Oh, that's a chess master for you, isn't it? I say amen tonight. Oh, but I want to end this message by telling you about the Bible's greatest chess master. And now I said that God and Satan are in no chess match. But there was a time when Jesus came down to earth to play the devil in a great game of chess. You see, he whipped him in heaven. And the devil said, yeah, but that was on your home court. But Jesus said, all right, I'll come down there on neutral territory. And I'll take you out, even down there on earth. Amen. <laughs> wow. The enemy took his material. We know that because Jesus said the foxes have holes and the birds have air nests. But he said the son of man have no place to lay his head. Oh, the enemy took his stuff. He didn't have nowhere to lay his head up on a rock. Had no material. They took his space. They put him up on a cross and they crucified him there. He couldn't go anywhere. Somebody say amen tonight. Oh, but listen here. I didn't say he was great. I said he was a chess master. Oh, hallelujah. They came on down and they pierced his side. And I heard Jesus say, It's finished. And time shall be no more. And they took the third element from Jesus, which was his time. <laughs> wow. Well, the enemy had taken his material. Yes, they did. Oh, taking his time. Oh, he said it's finished. Oh, they took his space. They laid him in a tomb and rolled a stone across the door. Now, brothers and sisters, I've already told you it's a positive fact that you cannot win when three of these elements are taken away from you. But I come to declare tonight that Jesus is more than a chess master. He is God. With men, this would be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You see, Jesus defied the odds. He showed us what it takes to win the game. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Resurrection power. You see, when you're down to nothing, God's up to something, and you can still win. Hey, the enemy might take your time tonight. The enemy might take his face tonight. Oh, then he may get lucky and take your material. But it can't stop the child of God who's got the resurrection power in their life. Hey, I'm not just a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Because I can lose it all and still come back. You see, a conqueror can win. When folks talk about them, a conqueror can win when they lie about them. A conqueror can win when they lose their money. Oh, hallelujah. But it takes more than a conqueror. When everything goes wrong and everything is, is, is falling apart, oh, thank God. The Word of God said that we are more, we are more, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Listen to me. The devil don't like to play chess with the people of God. Ah, 
I said the devil don't like to play chess with Holy Ghost filled preachers. He don't like to play chess with the saints of God because like Martha said, I know you'll be resurrected. But Jesus said, no, my dear. I am the resurrection and the life. They can put you in a tomb and roll a stone across the door and we'll still come out of there. Get off your backsides and stand across the house. I'm a winner either way. If I go or if I stay. The enemy cannot kill me. I am already dead. He cannot burn me. I said he cannot burn me. I'm already on fire. Are you listening to me tonight? He can't take nothing from me because I don't got nothing. But he ain't got nothing to give me because I got everything. Are you listening to me? I can win. Come on out there. You said you're going to help me tonight. They wonder how come we're still here tonight. If you knew some of the things Brother Lamb been through, you'd say, I don't see how he's still here. Uh huh. Sister Cannon, if folks had just seen some of the things that you've come through in life, I guarantee you there are those that would say, I don't know how she made it. I don't know how she came through what she came through. And it's not it's not any with you all. Every one of us here tonight, we've had our hard times. And we've been down in the gutter. And we made our share of mistakes. But you see, we ain't gave up. We're still here tonight. We're still fighting. We may not be on the top. We may not be the greatest. Oh, but we're still alive. We're still fighting. We're still going. We go stop. Y'all better be careful tonight. I'm about to run some some seats in here, Brother Wally. Come on now, brother. You said, oh, me. I just kind of smiled out to myself. And I said, boy, you don't know what God's got in store for us tonight. Uh-huh. Now let's take like Brother Wally for an example. Brother Wally's not a pastor. Brother Wiley's not a preacher. He's not, are you a Sunday school teacher? No. And you're not even a Sunday school teacher. Oh, but Brother Wiley's still serving God. Brother Wiley's still here. Even though the enemies try to destroy him. How have you done it, brother? Because the kingdom of God is within you, brother. And you can win. You can win. You can win. There ain't no reason in this world the Bowers family should be in a wholeness church tonight. I said there ain't no reason in the world that you all, because everything was wrong. You see, brother, I ain't forgot about you in that tent revival. I ain't forgot the night that I preached on burning Satan's bridges and your face was about as pale as this hall right here. I haven't forgotten about that, Sister Bowers. No. But you see, the enemy had you all. And he thought you had won the war. But listen to me. You've got greater in you than he that's in the world. That's why. That's why. That's why I'm still here. That's why you're not dead. And we're still serving God. I'm still here tonight. Sister Rose, I'm still preaching. I'm, uh, I'm still living holy tonight. I'm still praying like I've always prayed. I'm still fasting. I've even opened my Bible and read it this week. <laughs> oh, yeah. You say, well, that ain't nothing, Brother Lamb. Yes, it is. When you consider where I came from, when you consider the false doctrines I was raised in, when you consider the lies being told on me, but listen, those things don't matter. What's around you, it doesn't matter. It's what's in you. It's what's in you.
Can somebody out there say, I'm still here, devil? I said, can somebody out there say, I'm still here, devil? Uh huh. You see, I'm not like some of you. Some of the stuff they said about me was true. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, some of the things I said was true. Oh, yes, it was. I wish I could say it was all lies. But Brother Bowers, Brother Lamb has messed up a few times. Brother Lamb has done a few things he shouldn't have. But you listen to me. My desire was greater than those things around me. I got knocked down, but I get back up. Ain't that the way it is? We get back up. I'm going to keep swinging. I'm going to keep fighting because I know when the trumpet sounds, if I'm on my feet, I'm leaving here. Lift your hands across this house. Give God some glory. Devil, I'm still here. No, I'm not on a mountaintop. No, I'm not where I want to be. But I am still here tonight. I'm still in a revival service tonight. I still love Jesus. And I'm still saved. I'm still going over with Jesus just the same. I'm going to keep on until I reach the mark. I'm going to keep pressing until I reach the mark. I know I may be down a little bit from where I want to be, Brother Wally, but you hear me tonight, church? I'm going to keep on climbing. I'm going to keep on stepping up. And if I slide back two, I'm going to go up four. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on climbing. I'm going to keep on fighting because I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. There's no quitting in me. There's no stopping in me. Oh, God is my Father. Oh, Jesus is my Savior and the Holy Ghost. I'm about to close. I remember when I was about 10, somewhere around there, 8, 9, I was out in the field with a little boy. Oh, he's about the same age, but he was a whole lot smaller than me. And I got in like him, and I wanted to fight him. I remember that little, that little young boy. I could have pounced on him, but I couldn't get to him. Uh -uh. He just kept on bouncing up and down. I'd push him as hard as I could. he just fly back and land on his feet, and he'd keep on bouncing. And he'd say, come on, big boy. You can't knock me down. And the more he said it, the matter I got. And I pushed, and I pushed, and I pushed, and he kept on coming back. And he said, come on, big boy. Knock me down. I think it's about time for some of you saints of God to look the devil in the eye and say, come on, big boy. Boy, you ain't knocking me down. You're not putting me down. I will keep on fighting. Can we win? You listen to me, Covenant. You look right here in my eyes. You look at me real good. You know I ain't scared of you. I ain't a bit, I ain't scared. I ain't afraid of you. I love you. I come to tell somebody tonight, you are a winner. Dad and family, you're a winner tonight. You're not a loser. You see, Brother Lamb preaches hard. I do most of the time, Brother Bowers. And if you've been there last night, you would have given me another label. Besides hard, you would have called me something over crazy or extreme. But I come to tell somebody that my favorite people in the world is God's people because they get back up and they keep on fighting. They keep on going. They never quit. They never quit. But they'll fight until the end. One more time, lift your hands across this house. Come on, praise Him.
You want to know tonight why Jesus told us not to be afraid? He said, I have overcome the world. Let me tell you, Becky Smith, why he said that. Because he knew that one the veil of the temple was going to be written twain, and your heart was going to be the tabernacle of Jesus Christ. And when the enemy tells you you're going down, it would, it would behoove every one of us to look the enemy in the eye of the wally and say, I will not be afraid because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. And Covenant Holiness Church is going to overcome the world. They're going to overcome the adversity. They're going to overcome the enemy. And they're going to march on because God is in us of a truth. And where God is, there's victory tonight. I said there's victory. Hallelujah. Would you come out and pray tonight? Hallelujah. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Oh, Sister Smith, you're a winner. Hallelujah. Cannon family, you're a winner. We're winners either way tonight. I can because God said I can. I can because He fights with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. Thou art with me. Thou art with me. Uh, I'm a winner tonight, Brother Smith. I'm a winner tonight. Oh, I'm a winner tonight. I'm a Christian. I serve a living God. I'm a child of the King. I'm a winner, Sister Lamb. Oh, I'm a winner tonight. I can win, Sister Tiny. And you can win also. You can overcome any adversity. You can overcome any heartache. You can overcome any trial. Because God is in you. And you will overcome.
couldn't even fight them. If the Ark of the Covenant was in the camp, they'd try to steal the Ark before they'd go to war with them. If you can steal the glory, you might fight you. But as long as God's glory is in the house, we will win. Wow. Them old Philistines, they say, hey, is the ark down there? Is it, is it down there or is it in the, is it Obed Edom's house? Well, if it's in Obed Edom's house, we might go down and fight. Oh, but when they found out the ark was put on the old cart and taken back home, there was peace in the land. They didn't want nothing to do with God's people when the ark of God was in the camp. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. 